Welcome to Animology, a podcast about language, the animal-related words and expressions we use every day, and how these words shape and reflect our relationship with animals. My name is Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. You can find me at ColleenPatrickGaudreau.com and this podcast at AnimologyPodcast.com. And you can find this podcast on Twitter at AnimologyPod. Be sure to subscribe to Animology at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And thank you so much for sharing this podcast and leaving ratings and reviews. Word of mouth is the best way to share, and supporting it is the best way to keep it going. You can go leave a tip in the jar at patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau. Today's episode is No Critters Harmed, Colors Inspired by Living Animals. In a previous episode on words for different colors, in an episode called Ingrained, A Crush of Color, I talked about the names we have for colors based on animals who have been crushed to create the color or from whom we've extracted their secretions to create color or pigment. Today, we talk about the names for colors whose histories are a lot easier on animals because they're inspired by the colors of living animals, so no critters harmed, nobody harmed. We're going to start with the color taupe, T-A-U-P-E, which is a soft beige color between brown and gray. The word comes into English via the French noun taupe, which itself comes from Latin talpa, meaning mole, as in the animal from the talpidae family. Animals in this family are called talpids in general and are found across the northern hemisphere and southern Asia, Europe, and North America. Talpids, or moles, are small, insectivorous, dark-furred animals with cylindrical bodies and hairless, tubular snouts. The name originally referred only to the average color of the French mole, but beginning in the 1940s, its usage expanded to encompass a wider range of shades of this brownish gray. The first recording of taupe as a color name in English was in 1911, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. And so taupe is an animology. It comes from the word taupe, meaning mole inspired by this animal's coat. Another word for a color that came into English via French is vermilion, a brilliant, vivid red, reddish orange color, which is also called Chinese red or cinnabar. And this word too, like taupe, came into French via the Latin word for an animal. Vermilion comes to English from Old French, for male, from late Latin vermiculus, referring to a type of red worm. See where I'm going with this? Of course, vermiculus is formed from Latin vermis, meaning worm, and we see that same root in the words vermin, varmint, and vermicelli pasta, the long, thin pasta whose name translates literally to little worms. We also see it in vermouth, a fortified wine infused with spices and herbs, herbs such as wormwood, hence the name vermouth, though there's a little more to say about how that word came about. It's pretty fascinating. Stay tuned for episodes on the animologies of various types of pasta, foods, and beverages. Luckily for the sake of the critters, the color vermilion does not come from the result of crushed animals, as we discussed in the episode Ingrained, where many insects and mollusks were victims of being crushed in order to create a color. That's not the case with the red worm. The name of the color was inspired by the color of the animals themselves, the red worms. The color vermilion uh, was made originally from the powdered mineral, a mercury sulfide mineral uh, called cinnabar, which is why the color is also sometimes called cinnabar. The names vermilion and cinnabar were interchangeable until the late 18th century. Grinding cinnabar to produce the brilliant red powder called vermilion goes back thousands of years to the area that is now Turkey, but the color is now produced synthetically because cinnabar was found to be highly toxic. The ancient Romans used vermilion for frescoes, some of which have survived, uh, such as those in the Villa of Mysteries, which I saw on a recent trip to Pompeii. It's amazing how vibrant the red still is. You can go see for yourself. During the Middle Ages, vermilion was an important color in illuminated manuscripts. 
although it remained prohibitively expensive until the 14th century when a synthetic version was first produced. It was the traditional red pigment in Chinese art, and over the centuries, you see it in famous paintings by Titian, Vermeer, Caravaggio, and Rembrandt. Vermilion, the color red, inspired by the red worm. Moving on to another color name inspired by the color of an animal is teal, T-E-A-L. Teal is a deep blue-green color that was very popular in the 1940s and the 1950s in the United States for decor, for clothing. The color teal gets its name from the colored patterns seen around the eyes of or around the wings of or on the head of the common teal, a member of the duck family. So the word teal to refer to a small freshwater duck goes back to the early 1300s. And the first recorded use of teal as the name for the dark bluish green color is 1923 in an advertisement for clothing. So we've got taupe for mole, vermilion for red worm, and teal for a duck. We've also got merlot for blackbird. But merlot is, of course, a variety of grape originally grown in the Bordeaux region of France that's used to make red wine. Now, I could have just stuck this word in an episode on food and beverages that we are going to do, food and beverage words that are animologies like vermouth and vermicelli. But I think it belongs here because Merlot is a color. It's a deep purplish red named for its resemblance to the color of the wine variety of the same name. But also the name of the Merlot grape is inspired by the color of a bird, the blackbird. The English word Merlot is a direct borrowing from French Merlot. Merlot is French for young blackbird. In fact, the common blackbird is from the species Turtus marula, marula, blackbird, merlot, blackbird. So the grape merlot and the wine merlot are named such because of their dark coloring, named because the French word for blackbird is merlot and the related French word merle, M-E-R-L-E, which means, yes, that the name Merle uh, is an animology. When I was talking to my husband about this episode and the words that come from animals, colors that come from animals, he remembered the falconry episode in which I talked about the word haggard, referring to a tired, worn-out female bird. And so he put together the fact that the entire name of the famous Bakersfield, California, Bakersfield, California musician, Merle Haggard, is an animology. So Merle meaning blackbird, Haggard meaning worn out bird. So I guess Merle Haggard translates to tired, worn out blackbird bird. So if you know any Merles, and I know a couple actually, their name is an animology and it means blackbird. And I'll just give you a little bonus animology for you because it will give you a taste of uh, the episode I will do on geographical place names that are animologies. The Balkan country Kosovo is an animology. It means land of blackbirds. Kos is a Serbian term for blackbirds. So Kosovo is an animology. And we'll return to more animologies in just a moment, but just a quick break to remind everyone that animology is brought to you by the listeners of this podcast, which means you. Uh, Think of patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Gaudreau as a tip jar. If you appreciate what you hear in this podcast, if you've learned something you never knew before, if you've shared anything you've learned in the Animology podcast, you can show your appreciation by filling up the tip jar. Not only does your support make everything that goes into this podcast possible, the research, the writing, the preparation, the recording, the editing, the file hosting, the social media marketing, you also enjoy some perks depending on the level you choose. One of the levels gives you written transcripts to each and every episode, which of course is helpful for a podcast about words. So check out the different levels and show your appreciation by adding a tip to the jar at patreon.com slash Colleen Patrick Goudreau, or you can just go right to animologypodcast.com and click on the donate button. Thank you so much for your support. Our next color related animology is the word ivory. 
which first and foremost refers to the hard white substance composing the main part of the tusks of elephants, hippopotamuses, and walruses. And because of the demand for its use in traditional Chinese medicine for making carved trinkets and to display as trophies, we are seeing the decline of the African elephant population at an alarming rate. Individuals are brutally killed and mutilated just for their tusks, just for this ivory, while babies who witness these violent events are traumatized and, of course, orphaned as a result. The link between the word ivory and elephant is as strong as the bond between mother elephant and baby elephant because the word ivory comes from a word that means elephant. Ivory comes into English in the 14th century from the French ivoire, from Latin iboreus, which meant of ivory, which came from an early Coptic word, ibu, E-B-O-U, meaning elephant, which came from the ancient Egyptian word abu, meaning elephant. And though we'll talk more in future episodes about words from horses, the word hippopotamus that I just named above as an animal who has ivory tusks as well, hippopotamus is an animology, not the animal, but the word hippopotamus is an animology. It means river horse. It comes from the Greek words hippos, which is Greek for horse, and potamus, which is Greek for river. As a color, the name ivory has been around since the late 1500s. Its hue ranges from white to yellowish white to pale yellow. And because of its color, it used to be used to make cutlery handles. I guess it still is in some cases, white billiard balls, white piano keys, white buttons, and a wide range of ornamental items. Synthetic substitutes for ivory in the use of most of these items have been around since the early 1800s. The billiards industry, for example, came up with an alternative synthetic material, and the piano industry stopped using ivory from animals as a key covering in the 1970s. But ivory remains the name of the color, inspired by the beautiful body parts of some of the most incredible animals on the planet. They use their ivory tusks to display dominance, to defend against attackers, to dig, to bore tools, and they belong on their bodies, not in our hands or homes. So ivory and animology coming from the word that means elephant. In the word palomino, we have the color of a horse named for a bird. What? Palomino is a 1914 borrowing from Spanish palomino, which translates to of or resembling a dove or young dove, alluding to the golden color of this horse's coat and the creamy color of their mane and tail. Paloma is Spanish for dove, which means, of course, you can see another proper name that is an animology, Paloma, as in Paloma Picasso. In fact, there's another proper name, a place name, named after doves, a Palomar Observatory on Palomar Mountain in Southern California, in San Diego County, is a famous observatory, Palomar Observatory. It sits on Palomar Mountain, which is a California state park, and Palomar Mountain means frequented by doves, referring to the Spanish colonial era when Palomar Mountain was known as the home of band-tailed pigeons. So Spanish palomino probably came from Italian palombino, which means dove colored. And that came from Latin palumbus, referring to a type of wood pigeon. And so we have the palomino horse, so-called because of the dove-like coloring, a light brown or cream with a pale mane and tail. Palomino is an animology meaning dove. Now buff is a color that is yellowish, kind of light brown, tan color. And it's inspired by the color of the American buffalo, who are, frankly, actually bison, if you want to be accurate. But because they've been called buffalo or North American buffalo for so long, it's become the name for these amazing animals in the Bovidae family. We were lucky enough to see the bison in Yellowstone. And of course, these animals, even those in Yellowstone National Park, are under threat because of the ranching industry who don't want any wild animals infringing upon grazing land, that they're domesticated uh, animals as part of their industry, the cattle industry uh, use for, uh, for grazing. But the color buff comes from the word buffalo. Certainly the living animals 
that's where the color was inspired from. But unfortunately, the other meanings of the word buff, as in being an enthusiast, like a music buff, or being completely naked as in the buff, reference the skins of these animals stripped from the slaughtered animals and worn by people. That's another conversation, and we'll cover that in another episode. Uh, But for our purposes, the color buff is inspired by the color of the animal, the buffalo. Our next animology is more of a dual color, piebald. Piebald, P-I-E-B-A-L-D, means spotted or patched, especially in reference to black and white, sometimes brown and white, as in a piebald animal, often used to refer to the color pattern of a horse, blotches of black and white that make up the animal's coloring. Now, it could also be used to refer to, say, my cats. My cats are black and white tuxedo kitties. The tuxedo aspect of my black and white cats has to do with how the exact pattern of the black and white colors is arranged. Obviously, that's determined by genetics. So so you have two different colors, black and white, but you have those colors form a particular pattern. So you see the chest is white, their paws are white, their belly's white, but the rest of them are black. That's a tuxedo pattern because it looks like they're wearing little tuxedos, but they are technically piebald. The fact that they have two different colors, black and white, makes them piebald. It just means of two colors. And it's an animology because it's a compound word formed from pie, as in magpie in reference to the black and white plumage of the magpie, the bird, plus bald, pie, bald, pie is in magpie, and bald from the older meaning of the word bald, which meant white. And we see that older meaning of the word in bald eagle. Obviously, eagles have feathers on the top of their heads. They're not bald in the way that we would say a human is bald because there's no hair. They're bald because the word bald meant white. So piebald, a word first attested in the 1580s, means a black and white coloring inspired by the coloring of the magpie, the bird. So those are all colors named for animals in which animals are in the etymology of the colors themselves. But we also have many colors named for, inspired by the color of the animals, just the color of the animals. It may not be in the name of the animal themselves. Now, fawn is an interesting word, and we're going to come back to fawn again many times in animology. The color fawn, as in a light grayish brown, is named such because of the color of young deer. So fawn, the color, is inspired by the color of the precious deer babies. And I found out actually today that a new baby was just born on our property. We have a lot of deer on our property. If you ever want to see the deer we have around our Oakland, California house, you can follow me on Instagram at Joyful Vegan because I take pictures of all the deer and they're amazing. I put water out for them. And I have seen many of the newborns born each year, and I name them and know them and watch their behavior. I've unfortunately had to bury some of them as well. But the color fawn is named after the young deer. And to answer the question you're probably asking, the verb fawn, as in to fawn over someone, meaning to exhibit affection or even seek favor through flattery, has an entirely different etymology. It comes from an old English word that means to rejoice, as in a dog wagging his tail in excitement when he sees you. He's fawning over you. But fawn, the color, the noun, is inspired by deer. And then we have many other colors inspired just by beautiful animals. You know, when we say parakeet yellow or canary yellow, we know what color that is. Raven black, tiger orange, robin's egg blue, uh, flamingo pink, peacock blue, Coral pink or coral red, obviously is inspired by the coral. uh, Oyster or pearl, oyster pearl or shell color, we know what that color means as well. And so there you have it. All the colors inspired by and whose names are etymologies of animals, taupe meaning mole, vermilion meaning red worm, teal referring to the common teal duck, merlot meaning blackbird, ivory meaning elephant, palomino meaning young dove, buff from buffalo, piebald from magpie, fawn inspired by the coloring of young deer, 
And then we have the non-color words I mentioned that have shared animologies such as vermin, varmint, vermicelli, vermouth, wormwood, all of which have the origin of worm. Talpidae is in the family of the talpids, the mole family. Merle, as in the person's name, meaning blackbird. Kosovo, meaning blackbird. Turdus marula, as in the species of blackbirds. Hippopotamus, meaning river horse. And Paloma, a woman's name, meaning dove. So that's all I have for now. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you're starting to notice animologies when people speak. Are you wondering about any words that might have animals hidden within them? Be sure to drop me a line through animologypodcast.com. Leave comments on today's show notes for this episode at animologypodcast.com. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for supporting Animology. Until next time, for the animals, this is Colleen Patrick Gaudreau. Thank you for listening to Animology, changing the way we talk and think about animals. <music>